This is our JCNC Compassion Vegan and Gym Day Day. I'm really excited that you all could join us. Um, we have a great kind of agenda for today, starting off with a few speakers um, from outside of the Jane community who we're really grateful for them to come out and take their time to speak today um, about some of the you know, causes, uh, some of the things that you've seen here in the documentary from clothing to health to fashion to um, you know, animal treatment, which you know, as Janes, um, sometimes we don't think about. Obviously, we're, most of us are raised vegetarian, but um, there seems to be some type of disconnect within the dairy industry. So it'll be great to hear some of these perspectives. Um, after all of the speakers, we'll have a Jane and vegan lunch served from one o'clock. And then after that, we'll finish actually the rest of the documentary. We just wanted to start off the day with this brief viewing, because this was a Jane Winnie in India, actually, who spoke about this topic, so it was really, enlightening to see that coming um, and that this is coming to the forefront in India as well. Um, everyone comes to the idea of compassion and, and from different you know, walks and ways of life. For me, uh, I was always raised vegetarian in a Jain household, but we became, my wife and I became vegan about five years ago due to health reasons. And as we were discovering more of the foods we can eat and, and new foods, we also started learning about um, you know, how animals were treated, um, how clothing was made, and some more of these things that became more of an ethical reasoning, and then hence more of a compassionate way of living. Um, and some people come into it um, more from the animal's uh, standpoint. So it's just really interesting to hear all these perspectives and see how people can embark on a more compassionate way of life. Um, with that said, I would like to introduce our first speaker today. Uh, he's from the group Vegan Outreach. His name is Jack Norris. Um, I'm just going to read a brief bio about Jack. Uh, Jack Norris is a registered dietitian and the executive director of Vegan Outreach. Vegan Outreach promotes individual outreach primarily through distribution of booklets on college campuses through their Adopt-a-College program. Um, along with Ginny Messina, Jack has written the book Vegan for Life. Uh, everything you need to know would be healthy and fit on a plant-based diet. He runs a nutrition blog, and he's the author of Vitamin B12, Are You Getting It? Uh, he earned his degree in nutrition dietetics from Life in, uh, University and finished his internship at Georgia State University in 2001. Welcome, Jeff. Yes, I have a slideshow. Now, will I be the one? Put you to slide. Should I sit down? You're welcome to sit or stand, but okay. yeah, there's not a remote, right, for the slides. Uh, I think you just have to, or if you want one of us That's to. That's fine, I can, no, okay. I can do it. Okay, great, thank you very much. I'm very excited that uh, you're having a World uh, Vegan Day, and I'm honored to be here to speak to the Jane community, and hopefully this will result in vegan outreach and the Jane community working together more in the future. Uh, this is the first Jane event I've been to. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so, um, VR started in 1993 uh, as a response to finding out how animals are treated on modern farms. And we were horrified by how, uh, how they're raised in very tiny uh, uh, cages where they can't turn around their whole lives in some cases. And I'm going to show a few pictures in a second. But, um, and then we were geared towards helping animals in general, but we realized that most animals in the US that are killed by humans are killed for food. And as you can see by this graph, uh, almost all the animals, all the land animals killed in the US are um, for food. So we felt that since everyone eats, uh, we can make more of an impact for animals by trying to persuade people not to support this sort of cruelty. And here's a picture of uh, gestation crates where mother pigs are kept for a great deal of their lives. They're usually shuttled from a gestation crate to a farrowing crate, which isn't much different, and then back to a gestation crate. They don't get to walk or turn around most of their lives. Uh, so that is pretty horrible. They develop all sorts of uh, diseases and mental uh, problems due to this uh, terrible confinement. Uh, and then here's a picture of battery cage hens. Uh, these hens are used to, to lay eggs, and they're just crammed together in, in tiny spaces. 
and they have to live like this until they die. Many of them do die in the cages, and then after about a year and a half, they they uh, they clear out the entire warehouse uh, and slaughter all the hens, and then they populate the warehouse again with baby hens. So, um, and that's where eggs come from. For most of the eggs you're gonna find in the grocery store. Now, there's been a legislation in California to try to make to make this illegal in 2015, and the, the hens will have more space. Here's a picture of a dairy farm. I've seen many dairy farms like this. Uh, the, the picture's re low resolution, but uh, you probably can make out that the cow is standing up above its ankles in manure, but maybe you can't make it out, it's a little easier on my screen. But I, <clears throat> I've visited dairies as well where the, the cows are knee, knee deep in manure and mud, and these places smell horrible. I imagine it affects the cows after a while, um, how bad, and the, the stench and the ammonia. Um, and so when dairy cows are stop producing enough milk to keep them economically viable for the farmer, then they're taken to slaughter. An, <clears throat> a byproduct of the dairy industry is veal calves, uh, because mother cows don't give enough milk at, at a rate that would keep them profitable. They have to be impregnated about once a year so that they continue their milk production at a high rate. And so then they have a bunch of baby calves, and some of the calves can be used to give milk because they're females. Um, and then some are males, and they have no use for giving milk, so they just uh, slaughter them. And in some cases, they keep them in tiny little pens to produce a special type of veal before they're killed. So that, without the dairy industry, the veal industry wouldn't uh, exist. Then when, when the dairy cows are uh, taken to slaughter, many of them are in such bad shape from such a, a rough life uh, that they can't walk any longer. And so they end up being uh, going down and, and they become what's called downers. And there's all sorts of methods that the industry uses to move them, which are usually fairly cruel. So anyway, a lot of these cows suffer greatly uh, after being worn out from so many years of, of giving milk, uh, four or five years usually. A cow will normally live 20 to 25 years, but when they're in the dairy industry, they get worn out at a very young age and slaughtered. So by going uh, vegetarian, one person can save about 25 to 35 land animals per year, or at least remove your economic support from the industry for that many. But what's even better is that when you persuade other people to go vegetarian, then you can equal a great deal more animals. Your effect can be greatly increased about how many animals you're, you're preventing the suffering of. Now, I know the Jane community is vegetarian, and so, uh, you don't need to spread vegetarianism to, to yourselves, but obviously we live in a society where most people aren't vegetarian at this time. And by getting out in the, in the greater community and doing outreach, we can save a lot more animals uh, by, the, by then by just being vegetarian ourselves and create a huge impact on reducing the amount of harm. What Vegan Outreach likes to do is focus on college students because college students are often at a time in their lives when they're questioning uh, how, their lifestyle they're open to new ideas, they're away from their, their family in many cases so they can cre cook their own food and, and they're more independent about what they eat. And so, um, so that's why we focus on college students. Now here's an example of a youngster who's open to new ideas. Um, anyway. So what we do is we get out on college campuses and we hand out our booklets. Uh, and we just stand there, we pick a place, uh, and just start handing the booklets to, to students. Many of them read the booklets, and some of them are persuaded. We hear back every single day. Uh, we, have, we have leafleters throughout the country, and they report back to us what happened that day. And many of them, on any given day, tell us that they met someone that, that got our booklet in the past on the campus at, at a previous time, and that they have been vegetarian since then, or vegan since then. Or a lot of people say that they're going to go vegetarian or vegan after they get a booklet. And one nice thing, another nice thing is that we created conversations, especially when we go to a small school, if we hand out booklets to that, about 30% of the population at a school, we create conversations with all their friends for that whole day, and it, it cre creates a big buzz of people talking about these issues. Um, we've seen a big difference in attitudes towards vegetarianism and veganism on college campuses at, after doing this work for, now we've been doing it full force for almost 10 years uh, in terms of how many colleges students we reach um, and whereas students used to be very uh, 
antagonistic about what we were doing. Now they pretty much embrace what we're doing. And even the, even the students that aren't vegetarian or vegan, it seems that the, the attitude is, this is something good to be. I might not be a vegetarian or vegan right now, but they don't look at it in a negative way like they used to. So we are making progress. Here's two students that uh, we caught uh, on camera uh, checking out the booklets. And let's see. So here's a, a few quick examples of people who have gotten the R booklet and went vegetarian. And I don't, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds more where, where these come from. So we get to about, uh, we get to about 850 to 1,000 schools every semester. And we hand our booklets out to almost a million students per semester. This semester, we actually are on, on pace to, to break our, our, the million mark for the first time in a semester. So we, um, we, we do try to reach, uh, we try to reach every major school in the United States, every major college. And then we also have an active presence in Canada and Australia. And in January, we're gonna have our first full-time uh, outreach coordinator in Mexico. And we're gonna be trying to cover a large section of Mexico. Uh, Another thing that this does is it creates demand on school campuses for more vegetarian options. And when you get some students that are vegan and vegetarian, but they want, they want to have an option at each meal, a lot of the non-vegetarian and vegan students eat that, that vegetarian option. They're actually quite popular. And so that saves a lot of animals because if you can get 100 students to eat one vegetarian meal, that's like one person eating 100 vegetarian meals over, over many months. So we. It, it makes a big impact this, um, in, in that way as well. We've, uh, we've sent out to people to hand out uh, tw over 24 million, actually. We just crossed the 24 million mark. Um, and so, uh, to somewhat sum summarize my message is that you can do a lot to help animals uh, and to reduce harm in the world by getting out and and maybe you could uh, leaflet at a local college for a half an hour to an hour, just once a month. You, you can commit to that. And then if you can't commit to doing that, oh well, uh, another thing about leafleting is you don't need, it doesn't take much time. You don't need to start a group. You don't need to pass a law. You just need to get a, get a hand, stack of booklets and go and do it. And it takes, you know, like I said, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, <clears throat> unless you want to do more, of course. And a lot of people, after you do it, you feel very, it's a good feeling once you've done it because you, you usually will meet a few people that are excited to get the information and you feel like you've made an impact. If you don't have time to do that or you don't have the interest, Vegan Outreach can always use uh, <laughs> people to sponsor our leafleters to do it. Uh, we do have to pay people to do it during the weekday because not uh, <clears throat> we, we leaflet a lot of events on the weekends and that's usually all with volunteers, but not many people can take off their job during the week to go hand out booklets at colleges. So. It, it is, um, it's an efficient use of, of money, funds, but it does take, require funds. And so we can see a little bit of progress being made. In, in, in terms of the progress, it's a lot of animals. But as you can see here, uh, at, over the last number of years, the amount of animals um, being raised and slaughtered has gone down to some extent. I mean, it represents millions and millions of animals, these small changes. So uh, hopefully that will continue in the future going down as we do more work. Um, and as Martin Luther King Jr. said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Uh, in my time in doing activism, I started in 1988, that's when I became vegan, and it, I've seen a huge change in society. I mean, the, the idea of what a vegan is and what a vegetarian is, hard, people hardly even knew what, what it was in the United States when I started. Now. Pretty much everyone knows about it. There's so many different options. When we get, try to persuade people to go vegetarian and vegan, there, there's a lot. Uh, the, there's so many opportunities of for eating other tasty foods, whereas we used to have to come up with it on our own and be more creative. And um, so it's a, it is a long process. And I've been doing it for 20 years now. But I do see. Okay, great. I do see that we're making. If you look at it in terms of 10 years at a time, we are making a lot of headway. And we just have to keep at it. And, and the more we do, the sooner we're going to see the day when we no longer use animals uh, for food. Thank you very much. You have a couple minutes for questions, or you can say the Oh, sure. I have a, just a, two or three minutes if anyone has any questions. And I do, we do have a literature table out there if you want to sign up for our, 
our weekly e-newsletter and, and pick up some of our booklets. Yes. Uh, you talk about the animals here. What about the seafood? Uh, do you deal with that? Or? Well, we don't do a whole lot with that. What we're, we encourage, I'm sorry, the question is what about seafood? And so we hope that once someone be, stop, gets interested because of how they see pigs and chickens and, and cows treated, that then they will make that, uh, they'll come to our website. We have more information about how fish are, are raised on our website and how they're killed. And a lot of people don't even believe that fish feel pain. And we do have some scientific research to suggest that fish do feel pain uh, on our website. And, and it seems to be a natural progression that people stop eating fish at some point after they stop eating other animals. And so we don't want to hit them with, we, we, we mentioned fish in some of our booklets, but it's briefly, and um, because we don't want to scare them away too much at first. We want them to, to, to start, take a few steps, and eventually lead to not eating fish. Yes. But why should we do this? Well, I, the question is the purpose of the I thank you for that question, and I don't. Um, I think. Just repeat the question. Okay, the question is why should we do this? Why does it matter? Well, it, it's it's a matter of whether you care about whether there's other beings suffering. Yes. Yes, I think in the Hindu religion and in Jainism, it says ahimsa parmo dharma. That means non-violence or non-hurting others not to hurt is the greatest religion, greatest way of life. And the reason is, like in the Bible, this uh, golden rule, do unto others as you like others do unto you. If you don't like to be killed or don't like to be hurt, don't hurt others, because they have the same life. And if you don't like your things being stolen, don't steal for others. And if you don't uh, like to hear lies, don't lie to others. So it is just a natural thing that what you don't like, you shouldn't do to others. Right. Uh, I couldn't have said it better myself. He said, it, if um, don't do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so we would, if we weren't an animal, we wouldn't be, want to be treated like this. Uh, I mean, a non-human animal. We are animals, <laughs> but we wouldn't want to be treated like that. And uh, so we are doing our best to try to stop treating animals in ways we wouldn't want to be treated. Yes. Also, I like to add that, like, uh, that's also related to your health too, because you know, uh, around like a year ago, I was like, I'm, I'm from India, right? So I was vegetarian too, and I, I, I moved over here, and then after somehow with the people and all, I just kind of uh, like started eating all the animals and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, your way also, I have many kind of problem in my stomach and uh, some kind of gastroenterology problem and so forth. And from last year, I'm a pure vegetarian and I'm recovering back. So it's it's Great. it's also like related to your your health too. Like it's, so that's that's one of the reasons where, where you right. you should go with the vegan or vegetarian. Thank you. Yes, and I as a registered dietitian, I have a full, a whole talk on nutrition, but I didn't have time to give it today. Maybe sometime I could come back and give the talk on nutrition. That'd be great. And, It'd be great. And, and uh, Gina is a doctor. And I guess were you going to say some stuff about it too today? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Are you doing something to re reduce or eliminate the cruelty that is being done on all these dairy animals or? other animals, or you are ignoring that part, or you have given up. After all, okay. active campaigning, you can force them to give the proper living conditions to these animals. Okay, the question is, are we working to give better living conditions to the animals? And there are people in the animal protection movement that are trying to do that. Um, our group mostly tries to target consumers to not give money to the industries to support these things. We feel like that's a better long-range solution than trying to reform the industry. There's a lot of uh, problems with trying to reform the industry, and, and one is just resistance from the industry, but there's also just the mere fact of trying to feed uh, millions, hundreds of millions of people animal products. It requires so many animals, and you can't <coughs> give, all, you can't feed everyone by giving the animals a lot of space and a natural life, you have to put them together so that uh, animal products are affordable for people. So we would rather just get rid of that whole system altogether. And as the young man here mentioned, <clears throat> there's many health benefits from doing that anyway. 
and it's also environmentally a lot more sustainable to, to eat plants directly rather than to feed them to animals first. So that's our vegan outreach's goal is to eliminate using animals for food. Whereas um, there are some organizations that feel like maybe they can get the industry to change, and, and so they do that, but we don't pursue that ourselves.